Jesus said in Matthew 18, verse 20, he said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am alone. There, there I am in the midst of them. When we gather together in fellowship, the risen Lord Jesus Christ is among us. People should see that. People should experience that. People should encounter Christ within our midst. People should come in here and go, wow. Stand in awe of who he is. Jesus says in John chapter 13, he says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Our fellowship is supposed to be a witness to the world. In other words, the way that they see us relating to each other, they'll look at that and see Christ. Jesus says, the way that we love each other, the way that we relate to each other, by that will people know that you are my disciples. So the way that, that, that I, even, even after service, the way that I relate to Dorothy, right? The way that I talk to her, the fellowship that exists, the relationship that exists between us, people should look at that and see Christ. In our fellowship, the way that we love each other, the way that we serve each other, the way that we give to each other, the way that we speak to each other, other people should look at that and go, wow, that's God. That's God. There's something different there. I don't know what it is, but I want it. People should look at our relationships and go, wow, there's love there. There's a love that, that I don't know, and I, and I want that. I want to know about that. That's what fellowship does. Fellowship, true fellowship, as we love each other, as Christ loves us. People look at that and go, wow, I see Christ. Secondly, when we live in true fellowship, it will enable us to be a place where all kinds of needs are being met. All kinds of needs are being met. Verses 44 to 45 of Acts chapter 2, it says, And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds of all as any had need. This is incredible. Describing the early church, it says that, that often they didn't consider what they had their own. It belonged to the Lord. And so out of that place, out of their, their fellowship, as they, they saw needs, they just gave. They gave what they had to, to meet needs. And the Bible says that there was no one needy among them. All right? So one of the results of fellowship is that needs get met. People's needs get met. What's awesome is I see God doing this right now within our midst. And it's such a beautiful thing. You know, a couple weeks ago, I, I preached on offerings and what offerings are all about. And I gave you guys a challenge and I said, you know, just pray and ask God to place somebody in need on your heart and ask them what you're going to give and then just give that away. Did you know that out of, out of that Sunday, the next Sunday, apart from the tithes, people gave offerings and we had $1,600 come in in offerings to meet needs. Aside from that, I know of two individuals within the church who received over $1,000 each from people within the church, just who God, God placed them on their heart and they just gave. Come on, that's awesome. That's so beautiful. God, God is moving in our midst. Be encouraged. I, like people are stepping out and we're, we're getting this thing and, and needs are being met. This is exactly who we're to be. I'm so blessed by, by how you guys are responding to the word. But it's not just it's not just physical needs, it's not just provision. Uh, it, it, it's more than that. It's also you know emotional needs, spiritual needs. That those needs get met in the midst of fellowship. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. The writer of Hebrews says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, 
not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. He says, don't neglect meeting together. Why? What happens to our fellowship? We stir one another on toward love and good deeds. Things get stirred. Have you ever been around something who's passionate before? I, I mean, not even necessarily the Lord, but just passionate about something. Really passionate. It's contagious. Right? I mean, you, you find yourself, even if it's not something that you, you, you've heard about or that you're necessarily interested in, just through somebody else being passionate about this thing, you go, wow, tell me more. You know, I, I better check out this thing. Right? Good. Passion. And this morning, a, a girl in our North York church stood up and, and, and just passionately shared about what God's doing in her life. And I found myself sitting there going, wow, I need to preach the gospel more. Man, I need to pray for my neighbors more. You know? And just my heart being stirred up. That's what happens when we get together. You know, maybe you come in here today and you're going, wow, what a rough week. Things were tough. I don't have a whole lot of hope. I don't have a lot of joy. I'm tired right now. But I guarantee there's somebody in here today who, whose heart is passionately burning for God, who is overflowing with joy, you know? And just you being around that person, you find yourself going, man, I didn't feel that good this morning, but I don't know, it's going to just feel hope rising within me. I just feel joy being stirred up. And suddenly I find myself in a place of faith and passion for the Lord. That's what happens through fellowship. That's why it's important we, we spur one another on. Toward love and good deeds. We're to build each other up. We're to challenge each other to live out God's call in our lives. In this passage, the writer of Hebrews, he says, don't, don't focus on yourself. Look beyond yourself. Get to know one another. Not just show up on a, on a Sunday, but really get to know the, the people around you. Go deep together. Come to, come to understand your, your unique gifts. Your, your, your calling your struggles, your weaknesses, your joys, so that we can actually truly encourage one another, build one another up, challenge each other in the Lord and meet needs. And another passage in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, again, talking about fellowship, it says, take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hard by, by deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. So again, what's the, what's the purpose of meeting together? What's the purpose of fellowshipping with one another? It's to exhort, to encourage, to strengthen each other in our faith in Christ Jesus. The whole point of us Getting together, the reason why we're here is not just so that we can feel good about ourselves and, you know, have a good time and sing some songs and go home again. The purpose is so that we can be built up, built together in the Lord, right? The purpose is so that we can once again shift our focus off everything else and turn to the Lord. And not just hear about God, but actually encounter Him in our midst. The purpose of us getting together is so that our, our, our faith is stirred up, our confidence is increased in His promises, in who He is, in His goodness, and His faithfulness within our lives. So that we'll, we'll walk out our calling, filled with faith, you know, so that we can experience this hope and joy of what it actually means to be united with Christ. When I was uh, at, doing seminary, I did it in uh, California. And in California, they have these big uh, redwood trees, or sequoia trees. Some of them are over 300 feet tall. So some of these trees, you can drive a car through the middle of the tree. It's incredible. The thing that I didn't know about these, these redwood trees, though, is that the roots of these enormous trees actually only go two feet deep. They don't go beyond two feet deep. Right? There's, no, there's no tap root. How do these trees stay up? How do they remain strong? How do they actually stand? It's through going out. The roots go out, and these roots actually interlock with other redwood trees. And in doing so, they remain stable and strong. All right? We need each 
show. You know, you, you want to be strengthened. You want to be encouraged. It might be in the person next to you. It might be through them that God is looking to encourage you. He's looking to build you up. He's looking to strengthen you today. We need each other. And that's part of the purpose of fellowship. Finally, thirdly, people, through, through true fellowship, us living in true fellowship, people are accepted and belong. Verses 46 to 47 of Acts chapter 2, it says, And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So get this, one of the results of the early church's devotion and fellowship was that the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Acts tells us that, that of the early church, that they were highly regarded, they were seen with favor by the people. And people, people heard the message, they saw how, how God was moving in their midst, they looked at the relationships that they had with other people and they said, we want that. And I'm telling you that very same thing should happen within our midst. People should come in here and go, wow, we want that. Especially in the world that we, that we live in where, I don't know, I think we're more connected than ever before. I, I was looking last night, they got 749 friends on Facebook. Right? We're, we're more connected than ever, ever before, but many of us find ourselves living with less meaningful relationships. I think more than ever before, people are, people are lonely. Pe people are, are, are depressed, they're isolated. They don't have deep, meaningful relationships or that place where they feel like they actually belong. And, and, I, and I think so many people within our world are looking for that. They're looking for real relationship. Where, where they can let down their guard and, and, and open up and share of, of who they actually are and, and that they'll be loved and accepted despite their failures, despite their struggles, despite their weaknesses. People are hungry for relationship. You know, they're, they're searching for a place where they belong. You know, a family that they'll, that they'll actually be accepted by. And I'm telling you that God has called us to be that family. Paul talks about that in Ephesians chapter 2. He says, so then you're no longer strangers and aliens, but your fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. In whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. So that's, that's who we are. We're, we're no longer strangers or, or, or foreigners, but now we are members of God's household. We've been adopted through Christ Jesus into the family of God. We are family. You know, and, and you know, in a family, you've got people who are different. You know, you may not always see eye to eye, but you're family. You know, you're, you accept each other because you're, you're family. You care for each other because you're, you're family. And that's who God's called us to be. I, I want to I be a church where, where people can come in here and just be overwhelmed by the grace of God. Go, wow. I've never felt so loved in my life. You know, I, I've never felt so much like I belong in the midst of a group of strangers, in the midst of a group of, of misfits, of people who don't seem like they, they really have a reason to be together. 